Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 183. On Now You Know. Brought to you as always by our wonderful Patreon patrons. We have all sorts of wonderful perks for our patrons because they help support this show, make it possible for you to watch it every week. So there's a lot of great rewards on there, and I urge you to go check them out on patreon.com slash now you know. And as Amazon Associates, we earn from qualifying purchases. There's a link down below that helps us out on the show. And we're also brought to you by ecoware.us. Ecoware starts positive conversations with carbon negative products. So you can check this one out here. My house is solar powered. What about yours? And you can see all lights are on in the battery-powered, solar-powered house where everyone else has their lights off. And actually, we got a new shirt today as well. Yeah, Tesla, Tesla Shanghai. Shanghai. So if you're interested in that, you can head over to ecoware.us. All of the products, completely carbon negative. And sponsored by our good friends up in Canada at Evoto Rentals, where you can rent a Tesla Model S, X, or 3. And now Evoto has expanded into new cities. They've always been in Montreal, but now you can rent a Tesla from them in Toronto and Ottawa. And they deliver to major hotels, offices, and even homes. And you can pick up in one city and drop off in another city. So tell them that Now You Know sent you, and the next five customers who book a car for 2020 will get two free extra days rental. But don't get too complacent because I've heard that a number of these slots are already left. Yeah. So uh, two free extra days with a, with a minimum two-day rental. Yeah. So that's like getting like half off. Yeah. So definitely go check that out uh, and do it so quickly. All right. So GM had an EV day uh, last week and we covered it in our in-depth. So if you want to learn everything there is to know about GM's EV day, we did an entire in-depth on it. Uh, we'll put a little card up here and you can go check out our channel to find the in-depth. Bunch of Model Y news. We found out that Model Y will have a powered lift gate. So that's pretty exciting because uh, that's one of the features that a lot of people have been wanting in basically their Model 3. And it'll also have a 12-volt socket in the back. Yeah. Thank you to Mr. Lee Tesla for these picks, which uh, show you a little bit more about what the inside of the Model Y looks like. Nice. And Model Y customers are reporting that they're seeing VIN numbers on their confirmation paperwork from Tesla. And this is one way that we can begin estimating delivery numbers. The VINs so far being seen, according to Electric, and what we've also been hearing as well, are between uh, 400 and 800, which tells us that so far Tesla is going to be delivering about 400 Model Ys this first week, and they seem to be headed all over the U.S. And some hackers have snooped around in the newest version of the Tesla app coming out. Uh, this is version 3.10.4, and it appears to have some Model Y images in there that they will use in the app to show the status of your car. Yeah, so let's talk about the app for a second, because I think if uh, there's a lot of non-Tesla users out there, mm -hmm. they might be like, what is all this talk all the time about the Tesla app? And I thought right. it might be worthwhile just to tell you what you can do with the app as opposed to a regular car, which pretty much just has a fob or a key. Right. So you can summon your car out of a parking space. Yes. That's just regular old summon, like simple summon. It just, just it goes forward, forward or backward. backward right. So and you can summon it into a parking space as well with the app uh, as well. Right. You can use it to open the frunk. You can unlock and lock the car. You can also start your car. Can I just stop you right there? Yeah. Two super important functions because I've used this before. Mm -hmm. If let's say you uh, fly to Cleveland and then uh, your wife needs the car and you forgot to leave the keys, you know, you took them with you to Cleveland. Right. Well, then your wife's not going to use the car. Right. But if you have the app for Tesla, you can just be like, oh, honey, I'll unlock the car for you or I'll start the car for you. From Cleveland, the right. app does not need to be next to the car. Right. It can be on the other side of the world. It does this all over the internet. Super useful. Super, super useful. And in fact, pretty much all of these function no matter where you are, except for summon. Right. Uh, so what else can you do? You can open the trunk. You can vent and also close your windows. So if it's really hot in the car and you don't want to just like waste a lot of energy using air conditioning, you can vent the windows. If it starts raining, you can close the windows no matter what state they're in. Yep. You can pre-cool or preheat the car before you go out in the morning. Which is really nice. You can flash the lights. You can also honk. So if you're in a uh, very big parking garage and you're like, where is my car? You know, everyone always used to have the little like, Honk, you know, click the lock button. This just flashes your lights. But you know what? With the app, you can check out the location of your car. It'll show you a map and show you where your car is on the map. And then you, in relation to your car, and 
give you directions to your car. Right. It doesn't help if you're in a 40 story tall parking garage. It won't tell you what floor you're on. Right. But at least you'll know that you're in the right place. You can put it into valet mode. So if you went into the restaurant, and you're like, oh, gosh, I forgot to put it in valet mode. They're going to be speeding around in it. Mm -hmm. Put it in valet mode. Um, you can put it in speed limit mode. So if you're letting your son drive the car and you're like, let's make sure he doesn't go too fast. Turn that on. Right. To whatever speed you want uh, above 50 miles an hour. You can also adjust your charging limit. Yep. So if you don't, if you're like, oh, I don't want to charge the car to full tonight, you can go and set it. Or if you're like, oh, tomorrow we need to go out on a big adventure, you can adjust your charge limit to make it even higher. You can uh, open your charge port. You can find superchargers. You can even purchase upgrades, schedule service, get roadside assistance, and you can share your referral code all with the app. Right. And that is... Why I think a lot of Tesla owners really love their cars. It's not so much just the car. It's also the connectivity that you have with your app. Being able to uh, set the temperature of your car while you're away from it. So that way when you get there, it's nice and toasty warm or it's nice and cool. Uh, whatever you want to do, it's really, really nice. So let's talk about some new over there updates that just came out. This is Tesla's track mode version two. So Tesla's performance Model 3s come with track mode. This is the ability to monitor and adjust some of the car's parameters, and it's made for racing on the track. Not made for driving around normal no. roads, public roads. Right, this is no. for private tracks. Yes. But now Tesla has released track mode version 2, and it looks awesome. So here's what Tesla has to say about it. Track mode has been improved to make it easier to monitor the status of your car, create custom track mode setting profiles, and record your track day data. You can monitor the status of your car's motors, battery, brakes, and tires, allowing you to adjust your driving in real time. G-Meter, a real-time accelerometer, can now be viewed in the cards area of the touchscreen. The map now displays a lap timer. Follow the on-screen instructions to place a start-finish pin on the map. At the completion of each lap, the lap timer displays the duration of the lap. It also displays the times associated with the previous and best laps in the driving session. Track mode allows you to save up to 20 track mode profiles to suit your preferences or driving scenario or customize for a specific track. You can adjust settings including handling balance, stability assist, regenerative braking, post-drive cooling, and compressor overclock. And as you were just asking, now you can save video and data of the track mode driving session to a plugged-in USB flash drive. Track mode stores a video of each lap in a driving session when using the lap timer. Track mode also stores the car status and telemetry data, including details about the vehicle's position, speed, acceleration, and the use of accelerator, which is stored as a CSV file on the USB flash drive. So, wow. Yeah, this is... So, I mean, for most people who don't need to buy a performance Model 3, who aren't ever going to take their car on a racetrack or are never going to take any car on a racetrack for the most part, this, this doesn't apply to them. But for the people yeah. who want to do racing in their car, whether it be autocross all the way up to, you know, take it out for, for like a race weekend out on a track somewhere. Well, and if you want to know what Jesse's talking about, we're going to show you some footage of track mode version two on our Patreon bonus stories because mm -hmm. it's some footage we can't show you otherwise. Right. So go check that out because that is going to be a lot of fun. But just the ability that this now brings, brings a whole new group of people, I think, uh, over to Tesla. I mean, track mode version one was pretty amazing. But now the ability to basically turn your all-wheel drive car, turn the, the bias all the way to rear-wheel drive. Now you have this drifting hoon wagon, which I don't think anyone expected to uh, be able to do this kind of stuff in a Performance Model 3 like ever, unless they like unplug the front motor. Now you can just do that. It's so close to a video game. The ability for you to, to make all of these changes, whereas usually in an internal combustion engine car, you'd have to make these changes physically. You'd have yeah. to be under the car with a wrench to make some of these these changes and decisions. You'd have to go buy new parts to make some of these things happen. You know happen. what? You've got me so excited here that I think I have to release some information that we may not have been planning on releasing. What? Oh, no, no, no. We, we can't tell. Them. I'm just so excited. I have to. Wow. I don't think we should. This June... Pikes Peak Hill Climb. We have the car. We have the driver. We have the will to win. We need you to join us. That's all I'm going to say. It. That's it. That's it. That's all we I'm going to say. We can't say anymore. 
That's that's all. Oh. Now, if you are excited about this new track mode, there is a new track package you can get for the Model 3. It's uh, $5,500, and we hear that it comes with new wheels, new brake pads, and new improved brake fluid. So if you really want to have your Performance Model 3 to be a super a driver's car this is this is i mean this is going to put the the bmw m3 to to bed yeah good night exactly good, good night sweet <laughs> prince you're gone because who in their right mind for, for the price i'm just talking for price here right um even without this this track package just uh, having the the uh the track mode I can't, I can't wait to talk about more yeah. of it on Patreon bonus stories. Do you have an older Tesla Model X or Model S with the original MCU one? Want to upgrade to a faster MCU so you can video stream, use karaoke, and play additional Tesla arcade games and future upgrades? Then you want the Tesla Infotainment Upgrade for just twenty five hundred dollars. So wait, what? What is uh? What is this now? Uh, so if you have the original MCU, the master control unit, um, master computer unit, I don't know what it stands for. Um, you know, you've got it in, in your older cars. The like master I, commander unit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like I have in Sparky. Mm -hmm. um, well, Tesla's now announced uh, that you can upgrade that to the, the latest unit, which is the MCU2 for $2,500. And I looked at it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I really need it for that much money. Like I would get better games and I'd be able to stream in Sparky, mm -hmm. but I would lose FM radio. So... You lose FM radio? Yeah. When have when was the last time you listened to FM radio? I actually listen to it a lot. But you can just stream it. You can. You're right. I mean, unless you're out in the middle of nowhere and right. the only thing you can get is FM radio. Yeah. So, I mean, the main reason is the cost. I just don't know that I, <laughs> I need it. And, I mean, there's been a lot of back and forth on the Twitters about this, about whether Tesla would have to have given you the MCU2 upgrade for free anyway to make Hardware 3 work. So, and that is if you paid for full self-driving. Mm -hmm. So according to Bonnie Norman and Hacker Green, Hardware 3 works with MCU 1. So that appears to be a false claim. Hmm. The theory was that Tesla was hoping that people would pay for the MCU upgrade, even though Tesla would have had to have given it to them for free anyway. Again, that appears to be false. So speaking of upgrades, Reddit user MaxMock got the Hardware 3 upgrade, and now the image quality of his camera has improved. So you can take a look at the improved image quality of uh, this compared to that. Yeah, so how did the, I mean, the cameras didn't change, so how did the image quality get better? So basically, you know, you're taking all of these camera streams in and then you have to crunch it down, fit it onto a hard drive, mm -hmm. uh, which is usually a flash drive. Sometimes you can get a hard drive or whatever, and you have to compress it. And so the Hardware 3 computer is able to compress it at a higher bit rate because it is a more powerful computer. Oh, well, that is quite a different image there. Uh, Yeah, really, really big, really, really kind of, I would say, important to a certain extent, you know, maybe you'd be able to make out a license plate that much easier. According to Electric, Tesla has a secret Roadrunner project that is working on mass producing a new battery cell tech that will not only be making an even higher energy density cell, but also a cheaper cell, one that breaks the $100 per kilowatt hour price point. Does this new battery tech utilize Jeffrey Don's and Maxwell's dry electrode new technology? Are they already testing vehicles with this new battery cell technology? Is Tesla utilizing the high bar acquisition to build the machine that builds the machine to turn Tesla into a battery making monster? Find out next week on the adventures of Tesla Battery Day. Yeah, we, we don't know. Uh, we don't know any of this. We don't know much because all of this is unconfirmed. Yeah, it's just snippets and bits of info that have been pieced together. And we're probably going to have to wait until battery day to get the whole story because the devils are in the details here. Right. Uh, we know that probably all this stuff is true to some extent. We just don't know what the actual numbers are. Right. I mean, I would be surprised if Tesla hadn't been working on some kind of behind the scenes uh, thing. But but right now, trying to chase after this Roadrunner project is very similar to trying, uh, you know, of Wiley e. Coyote trying to chase after the Roadrunner. We don't have any real details to bring you. We don't have, we can't make any claims based on conjecture. So we're just all gonna hang around and wait for battery day. So that way we will have all of the official answers. Um, and then we'll have a lot to talk about. We're going to have a ton to talk about. So, hey, hit the subscribe button. Yeah. If you haven't done that already, hit the subscribe button. It just means that, you know, we get a bigger number for our subscriber count, which is great. And it means that you are going to get notified when we 
put out that video. So according to Reuters, Tesla has secured Chinese government approval to sell longer range Chinese made Model 3 vehicles in China, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology said last Friday. So this would be for the rear wheel drive long range Tesla Model 3, which currently isn't being sold in North America or actually anywhere else in the world. Right. Uh, so that's interesting. So they're going to make this for the Chinese market. Why? It, it just seems so weird. You have this now if you want to buy the long range Model 3, it's an all wheel drive Model 3. So are do they know that there is some portion of the market that has been waiting for a very long time for a specifically a rear wheel drive long range Model 3? Yeah, I mean, please let us know if you know more about the Chinese market than we do. I mean, maybe this is some kind of sought after. I mean, a lot of people do like the rear wheel drive car. We have them mm -hmm. um, and they are really great. But I have no idea why the Chinese market would be getting this car and not North American. Market. It, it could be supply chain, I suppose. Maybe those those front motors are harder to get into China at the yeah, moment. I it mean, could be to reduce the cost. I don't know. We have no idea. So big shout out here to Tesla Raj and to Tesla Social and Wade Anderson for letting Tesla Raj take a look at his Performance Model 3. This is showing off version 10.2, which is 2020.8.1 of the new over the air update. And this is the one with track mode two. Yes, but there's also some features in there that you're gonna like even if you don't use track mode. So the first here is that the new update includes third party charging stations. Can you tell me what that is. So right now it's only in uh, particular areas of the country, but it's going to allow your car to find charging stations that aren't necessarily a Tesla destination charger or a supercharger. So for the longest time, if I was looking for a charger and I wasn't at a supercharger or a destination charger, I would have to pull out my phone, open a better route planner, find myself a charger, or a, you know, if I was planning a route somewhere, a better route planner to find a level two charger or some off-brand <laughs> charger, so to speak. Now it'll actually be on the screen in the car. Really, really nice. So there's some Bluetooth improvements. This pairs now only after you're sitting in your seat and the doors are closed. Right. And a lot of drivers have been complaining because you like are on a phone call and then you open the door and you lose the phone call through the Bluetooth and you're like, wait, where, where, where is everybody? Right. The Bluetooth would kind of be fairly finicky in terms of when it would switch. So you'd be on the phone, you'd be like, yeah, Ma, I, I'm, I got the eggs, I got the milk, don't worry, you know, I'm coming home. And then, and then you're like, hello, hello, what's going on? It was connected to your car right. the whole time. Your, your mom doesn't know what's going on. She suspects the worst, you know, and just assumes that you're dead. When in reality, it, it was just a Bluetooth thing. Right. So now it's really nice. It also makes sure that you're in your seat and close the door. So yeah. because, you know, before you could like open the door, then you'd close the door and then, you know, it was always so complicated. They've simplified it. That's what I love about Tesla. That came from a tweet to Elon. There's improved voice command reliability. So there's no need now to hold and press the button. You just press it once. And uh, I guess they've also improved the algorithm. Yeah, I, I never held it. I didn't know you could even do that. Yeah. I, I always pressed it and then said, you know, navigate to wherever I'm going. Obviously, there's the new track stuff. So, I mean, you're seeing here the handling balance, the stability assist from minus 10 to plus 10, the regen braking, the compressor overclock, the save dash cam laps, and the post drive cooling. That's all available now. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also visualization of your brakes, your tires, your battery temps, the G meter. So that's all there when you're driving in track mode so you can see what's going on with the car. Yeah. And there's improved regen braking for the Model S and X. Tesla said regenerative braking force has been increased to improve improve the driving experience and increase how much energy is actively returned to the battery when slowing down. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And this one is really important. They now have XFAT support for your dash cam slash sentry mode footage. What is XFAT? So, so this kind of gets into an esoteric topic about uh, drives and, and uh, partitions and uh, can get very, very out there very, very quickly. So let's just sim let's just dumb it down a little bit. When you buy a flash drive, mm -hmm. um, there is a particular kind of format that it is formatted to. And XFAT has become one of the most popular formats. In the past, your Tesla cam uh, flash drive had to be formatted to FAT32, which is another format, um, which is different than XFAT, but it's similar, that's why they have... All right, so to simplify it for, <laughs> so... for you, when you get most USB thumb drives mm -hmm. and you pop them in, this should now work. Right, this is going to make it a lot easier for nice. people. You're not gonna have to know what XFAT means. 
that's the nice part. Now there's been another upgrade, which is the Model S and X range boost. Does this mean that all the cars are getting more range? Uh, no, so Tesla released a new software update. It increases the displayed battery range of very recently made Model S and Model X long ranges. Okay, but the range doesn't change? The range was always higher on these cars because of, as Elon put it, many small hardware improvements throughout the car that have been introduced gradually over the past several months. So there have been small hardware changes to the car. Oh, but they weren't showing up in the rated miles. Exactly. So the car basically thought that it was going to be uh, less efficient. Now it is being more efficient, which means that it's going to have a larger range. So what are these ranges? So the Model S is now up to 390 miles and the Model X is up to 351 miles. One Model X owner uh, saw a range of 354 miles. Well, we all know that Tesla has a destination charging network, currently about 20,000 chargers at almost 4,000 locations worldwide. Well, now Porsche has taken a play from Tesla's playbook and has announced that Porsche now has 1,035 AC charging stations in around 20 countries. Martin Urschel, vice president of of smart mobility sales and operations at Porsche announced, thanks to Porsche destination charging, we are adding particularly popular locations to our charging network while also highlighting our claim to be a driver of the expansion of electric mobility. By the end of 2020, we aim to provide a total of 2,000 charging locations. And just like Tesla, Porsche offers partners four chargers for free, and it will list the location in its navigation system. So I like this. This shows that they are learning. I've always thought the destination charging model was super smart. It's good for businesses, and it's good for drivers. Right. It's something that I think needs to be expanded on all fronts. I think that uh, Tesla kind of has a good idea going it needs to be expanded further like there needs to be a, a lot more of these chargers everywhere um and i think the same thing for for porsche should be working as hard as they can to expand it as i think as what it is is most businesses don't know about it um when you go into a business a restaurant or hotel let them know about this program let them know to go to you know the website at tesla where they can check this all out fill out a form and then tesla will get back to them and talk about the whole program with right. them because if they knew that they could get free chargers i bet a lot of these businesses would join the program. Right. All right. So what is this I hear that Elon and Grimes are having a baby? Yeah. So we knew for a while that Grimes was pregnant and she just revealed that Elon is the father in the most rock and roll way possible in a Rolling Stones interview. Wow. So when's the baby coming? Uh, the due date should be early May. This is so exciting. I mean, Elon already has five boys. Now we're going to have another Musk baby. Yeah. I M mean, Musk and Grimes. Yeah. It's going to be one cool kid. Yeah. So Jesse, you remember Tyga, which is that Montreal-based uh, manufacturer? They make that electric jet ski. Mm. Well, they've just unveiled last week their pre-production models of their electric snowmobile lineup, the Atlas Crossover, the Nomad Utility, and the Echo Backcountry. Wow. The battery pack is structurally integrated into the chassis, which reduces the number of components and gives a greater weight savings. The top model has 180 horsepower, which is 135 kilowatts of power, and they're light at 534 pounds, 242 kilograms. Now they have a top speed, and get this, I didn't know snowmobiles could go this fast. Mm -hmm. uh, top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. That's 100 miles an hour. Oh, you didn't know they went that fast? I, I, I just couldn't picture going that fast <laughs> on snow. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, zero to 60 in under three seconds, mm -hmm. a range of 100 to 140 kilometers, mm -hmm. a two hour recharge time at level two charge speeds, or 20 minutes at DC fast charge speeds. Now deliveries begin in the fall. Oh, okay, cool. So I was like worried that they were coming out with it just in time for summer. <laughs> so last week we talked about the Citroën Ami and uh, we don't live in France, so we don't know what's going on in France, but JB does because he lives in France and he has a update on the Citroën Ami. Take it away, JB. Hi, Zach and Jesse. So after watching Tesla Time News and hearing you talk about the uh, Citroën Ami, I thought I would do a little digging and see if I could get a ride in one. So, just like any other car, I tried calling a Citroën dealer, and here's what happened. Citroën, bonjour. Oui, bonjour. J'aurais voulu avoir des renseignements sur la Citroën Ami, s'il vous plaît. Alors, euh... <rire> malheureusement, en boutique, en fait, c'est en succursale, on ne la propose pas à la vente. D'accord. Euh, elles sont vendues exclusivement avec un partenariat chez la FNAC et chez Dart. Ah oui. So it turns out, as for actual places where you'll be able to uh, try and, and buy the car, 
It will only be sold through a special partnership with uh, Fnac Darty. Darty is kind of a retail store, just like Best Buy uh, in the US. And La Fnac is more like um, a Barnes and Noble, if you'd like. And the two kind of merged recently. I also found this press release from uh, February 27. And it says that the car will be available to buy online uh, starting March 30th. So just like you said, the car can be bought for $19.99 a month after a first payment through a special rental program. But you can also buy the car for €6,000 right away. And if you go through the special rental program, it will only end up costing you about 3,600 euros. You can also uh, rent the car when it comes out uh, through the app uh, Free to Move. I think you have this app also in the US. And you can rent it by the minute, the hour, the day, or even for a few months. So I think that could be a, a great solution. And the price seems to be very affordable. Finally, and because I thought it was funny, even though the car is not out yet, Citroën is already selling some merch. So there it is. Maintenant vous savez. Now you know. Well, thank you, John Baptiste. That seems like it's going to be really interesting, especially as a rideshare option. Mm -hmm. Please update us when it gets released. So we love solar stories here on Now You Know because just like EVs, we know that solar power is a huge part of the solution to our sustainable energy future. So some great news here for Floridians. Florida Public Service Commission, which regulates the electric, natural gas, and water of Florida, just unanimously approved Florida Power and Light's Solar Together program, which will generate 1.5 gigawatts of solar with 20 new solar plants by mid-2021. This will be the largest community solar program in the U.S., more than doubling solar in the country. Now, what is community solar? Yeah, for people who don't have the ability to put solar on the roof, or maybe they just don't want to, you can sign up for solar that's located somewhere other than where you live. It doesn't even have to be physically connected to your house. It's for people who, you know, you live yeah, in you, an apartment. Exactly. Or you... Condo or something. Condo or homeowners association that, like, won't let you put solar or on your roof. Or, you know, your significant other won't let you put solar on the roof. Or if your roof is too small for whatever your purposes right. are, you can get community solar. And this is a great program for Floridians. Yeah. So, and, I mean, FPL estimates that more than 150,000 families and businesses want to sign up. And open enrollment begins on March 17th at noon. So if you're in Florida and you're interested, get ready with the button. And if you'd like to get solar on your roof, but you're just like, I don't know much about this. How does it work? Call up the guys at Energy Pal. They know a lot about this and they'll do all that work for you for free. That money comes out of the installer's pocket, not mm -hmm. yours. So it's kind of like having your own team on your side to help you with all the the choices and the numbers and the this and that. So go check out Energy Pal. The link is down below and tell them that now you know sent you. So Jesse, Boosted has gone bust. Boosted? Yeah, do you remember Boosted? They're oh, Boosted Board. Yeah, they were yeah. founded in 2012, and uh, it was kind of the undisputed leader in electric skateboards. You remember Casey Neistat kind of gave the company a boost when he featured <laughs> Boosted Boards as his preferred way of getting around New York City. Yep. Well, Casey hasn't really been riding Boosted Boards anymore. I wonder if that's why they've maybe taken a little bit of a dip. I Wait, don't know. So tell me, what, what's going on? Well, Boosted had just been making the Boosted skateboard, mm -hmm. and then last year they expanded into electric scooters, and a lot of people thought that that might have been a dumb move because there's so much competition in that field. Mm -hmm. But now it appears that Boosted might have gone bust. In a blog post on their website, CEO Jeff Ruskakow and John Ullman, the CTO and co-founder, said, Today we had to make the incredibly difficult decision to let a significant portion of the Boosted team go. We understand this news will come as a surprise to many of you, but unfortunately, developing, manufacturing, and maintaining electric vehicles is highly capital intensive. And over the last year and a half, our business has faced an additional unplanned challenge with the high expense of the U.S.-China tariff war. The boosted brand will continue to pursue strategic options under new ownership. So Boosted had 130 employees. It appears that most were let go with one week's severance. Yeah. Um, so that is very, very bad news for Boosted. It's so sudden. I wasn't like keeping my eye on the company. Well, they had moved all their manufacturing to China about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that we aren't understanding how, you know, a 25% tariff for any product is a big deal, let alone products with such a low margin. So And competition. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, I mean, I think especially with all the Chinese competition in electric mobility, mm. it just was hard for them to compete. Yeah. So Ford just announced that it will be bringing its electric transit van to the U.S. market in 2022. Didn't they already announce this? Oh, you're probably remembering that they announced that they'd be bringing the e-transit van to Europe in 2021. See, this is how these big companies work. 
They schedule months of meetings to discuss when something will happen uh -huh. and then release these dates slowly so that it appears that they're actually doing things. Meanwhile, Tesla focuses on innovation. Oh, okay. So this is just another opportunity to talk about it. Yeah, it's just another announcement. Okay, but I mean, so what are the, what are the specs? Well, Ford hasn't released any specs, but they have said that it will have smart technology built in. Oh, thank you. Goodness. Yeah. I was so worried they were going to put dumb technology. Yeah, no, no. They're smarter than that. They know to put smart technology. You got to put in smart there. technology. Yeah. I keep saying this to people and they never listen to me. Yeah. But, you know, if you really want some numbers related to Ford, how about these? Ford's stock closed on Friday at $6.49 <laughs> a share, which is a five year low. Wow. You know who else has seen their lowest stock price in 15 years? Oh, in 15 years? Uh, no. Who? Uh, ExxonMobil. What? Yeah, they used to be the biggest company in the world by market share. Now they are valued at number 11. Ooh. Renault just announced that they will be bringing its super inexpensive Chinese-made KZE all-electric crossover to Europe next year. It will be rebranded under the Dasha brand as the Dasha Spring. It's a four-seater, five-door city car with 190 kilometers of range. That's 118 miles. So when you say super inexpensive, what do you mean? Well, Renault hasn't given exact prices yet, but they did say it would be a little more expensive than the Chinese version, which sells for $9,000 US. Whoa. <laughs> We're getting into the uh, Citroën Ami price range. Yeah. That's cheap. That is cheap. That's kind of like what I paid for my Leaf, and it gives me the exact same capability, but my Leaf, my leaf was used. Exactly. So... That's a no-brainer. No, this What's is, it going to be worth used? I know. This is getting really exciting because there's a lot of people out there who can't afford you know, a $35,000 car, mm -hmm. but now we're talking sub-$10,000 cars. Right. And I mean, it is a capable car, especially for commuting yep. and, and not you know, long-distance stuff, which is 98% of what people need anyway. Exactly. I think that this is a really good fit for a lot of people. Yeah. Now, the Geneva Motor Show was canceled because of the coronavirus, so BMW unveiled its new electric i4 concept off-site. It's only been seven years since the i3 came out in 2013, but now in the next two years, BMW plans to release three new EVs, including the i4. I mean, they're just on a tear. So wait, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at this um, i4. Um, is this the production model? No, no, it's a concept. Oh, it's a concept. So that's why it looks... So sexy. So outrageous <laughs> and futuristic. It, it kind of looks like... like my grandmother designed it. It it <laughs> has like this real Italian like like what, you know when you put plastic on the furniture and you can't touch it. <laughs> That's what you feel. That's like. how I feel. It feels like don't touch it. Don't tell, don't don't, don't sit on don't, it. Don't tell the German designers that. <laughs> I I do like the nose on it. Real big nose. Real nice. Why did BMW the nose on the BMWs didn't used to be this big? No, no, they're they're almost overstating their they're brand just, now. They're just yeah. like, look at look what, at, what do we look have? Oh, what is our brand? Our brand is a nose. Make it big. So let's head over to some SpaceX news. We've been talking about cars so much. Oh yeah, let's heard... talk about something that can get out of here. I heard something blew up. Yes. So on February twenty eighth, uh, late at night, uh, they were doing a test on SN one. Now this is uh, the Starship prototype, serial number one. So the first one that they were working on. Um, they were doing a nitrogen pressure test, and it burst. Um, so no one was hurt, and not much was damaged besides the rocket itself. Uh, not that it's really a rocket. It's just a big tank, right. essentially. The failure was due to the poor design of the thrust puck and um, bad welds. Oh. Huh. So just for those of you who don't know what a thrust puck is, essentially it's where you mount the motors onto the bottom of a giant can – that is going to be full of rocket fuel. And Elon was not happy about this, no. actually, because uh, no one had told him that there would have been a problem there. So Elon went down there himself and kind of had to take over. Right. Now, this doesn't set SpaceX back too much. It was only going to be used for a static fire of one Raptor engine. You know, best case scenario, if it had held this pressure test, basically SN2, which they're already uh, almost done building, is far and away already better in terms of the design. And this is really SpaceX's uh, strength is that they're fast at iterating. They, they are moving fast. They are breaking things. They are learning from those failures and they're applying it to the, the, the latest iterations. Now, Elon let off some steam with some tweets. He said, so how was your night? And then after showing some video of the explosion, he said, it's fine. We'll just buff it out. Where's flex tape when you need it? And then he posted a <laughs> meme about flex tape, which was uh, very poignant. 
Now, Eric Berger wrote a great article about this on March 5th for Ars Technica. I urge you guys to go read it. It's called Inside Elon Musk's Plan to Build One Starship a Week and Settle Mars. So on February 23rd, before this even happened, they had an all-hands meeting at 1 a.m. in the morning. This is some information we found out in this article about how to speed up this process. So Elon's meeting with the engineers, and he's like, what can we do to speed this up? And they're like, well, we could certainly use some more hands. So Elon was like, all right, let's begin hiring. So he's like, hey, you guys. Find your family members, your friends, anyone who you would vouch for and bring them in tomorrow and we're going to do a hiring period. So in the next 36 hours, they hired 252 people. Right. They hired. Doubled. Hired. Yeah, they doubled their workforce just like that. Right. That is, in a nutshell, how Elon works. I think that he has been refining his process of how to do engineering fast and good. And this is his way of doing it. Um also, another thing in the article that I really liked about this was the the way that they are storing these rockets. Instead of you know spending millions and millions of dollars to build a giant uh, vertical assembly building, um, they're just taking a big tent, and if it's not tall enough, if the tent isn't tall enough, they're going to put it on some shipping containers. Yep. And if that isn't tall enough, they're going to add another layer of shipping containers, put a tent over that. And then they're going to use the shipping containers as office space. Like, that's really cool. To yeah. do that because this is how you move fast. Well, and check this out. So most of the people who had inked their contracts to start work um, by midnight were told to report back in the morning. <laughs> right. Th there's no – it's not like, okay, well, we will call you. It's like, all right, I'll see you in uh, six hours. So Starship should be done by the end of the year. And then Elon plans to build the Starship every 72 hours. Right. And this, again, is to get us to Mars. It's to – he wants to have a giant fleet of rockets constantly flying to Mars to make a Mars city. No one else is doing this. Even no. NASA yeah. is not – they are not anywhere near as ambitious. The plans to build the SLS are so – Slow and expensive. And expensive. I mean, we're talking billions versus millions, and right. we're talking a, a system that's using thirty-year-old rockets that are just going to crash versus a brand new system that relands. Like right. it's it's night and day. It's so crazy. So here's a cool story, Jesse. <laughs> One of our viewers got a Model Three, and well, you know what, Thorsten, why don't you talk about it? Hey, Zach and Jesse, this is Thorsten from Frankfurt, Germany. I just want to say thank you for your show. I absolutely love it. I watch it every week. And I guess you could say that it was your show that got me interested in Tesla so much that I ended up buying the car. So I've had it for six months and I'm very happy with the car. There was just this uh, one tiny little thing about the web browser that I thought could be improved a little. So I built something and I wanted to share it with you. So here it is. The web browser in the Model 3 is really basic. There isn't much to configure. You can have some basic bookmarks up here, that's okay, but you can't really set up your most favorite website somewhere and you also can't go to full screen. There's a trick to go to full screen by redirecting through YouTube, but once you do that you lose access to your bookmarks, so that's, that's kind of annoying. So I created this configurable application launcher where you can just set up your most favorite websites and web apps. I've already added some, it's actually empty if you go to it for the first time, but you can add your own apps here. It's very easy, you just need to enter the URL of the website. For example, I just type nytimes.com and hit enter and it automatically resolves the name and the icon of the website. So you get this nice little launch button here. So let's go to full screen. Just hit the full screen button in the upper right corner and it goes to full screen. Just confirm the redirect in YouTube and there it is. You have full screen app launcher and you can just launch your favorite apps right here. So just check it out and let me know what you think. It's absolutely free, of course. It's uh, available at this address here, applauncher.site. Now you know. Yeah, so Thorsten built his own app for the Model 3, which is awesome. Yeah. We just checked it out and it works. Yeah, works really well. Yeah, so it's applauncher.site. Go check it out. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. So again, if you would like to submit a story to us, make sure that you shoot a two minute or less story about something going on in your neck of the woods. Make sure you shoot it in landscape so it should be wider than it is tall. And make sure you don't use any music. We'll put that in for you. Anyway, we've got Tiago talking about something he found on the street. Hi, Jack and Jesse. Uh, this is Tiago from Portugal, Lisbon. I'm here just reporting on a new EV charger off the, off the street uh, parking solution 
uh, that I found in my street here in Lisbon. Uh, and I'm just gonna try to explain a little more about it. This EV charger is actually not just a regular EV charger, it's a lamppost and it's made by a company called Shredder. This is a great solution because it uses the same footprint as an existing lamppost. So you don't really need to build new infrastructure, you just need to add this lamppost uh, if you're going to build a new one or replace an existing one. I think this is a great solution for cities like Lisbon where the parking is very chaotic and there's cars everywhere and because it's an old city to build new infrastructure it takes a lot of effort so by replacing a lamppost it's done. I don't know the details of how to charge here but I, I guess you just need to subscribe to a service and install an app and then you swipe your card and you can start uh, charging. I tried to find out a little more about this product and I think it's actually uh, an amazing solution uh, for any city. Uh, it's a smart lamppost where you can add modules so I think even after installing you can add or take uh, things that you need uh, it has 360 lighting or different lighting solutions. It can have a CCTV camera, it can have uh, speakers, uh, even a Wi-Fi connection, maybe even for the upcoming 5G where more cities are trying to install it. It can also have an um, EV uh, charging solution. Uh, so I think why not? Why not have uh, things like this? And apparently it's not the only case. Uh, uh, I found this one in my street, but there's already other places in Lisbon that have it. And this is even a little news, newspaper, online paper a story about one of these lampposts. I hope you enjoyed this story, Zach and Jesse, and now you know. That's cool. I'm telling you, lampposts, that is the place to put vehicle charging. It's going to change yeah. the world. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. If you'd like to support the show for as little as a buck a month and get to see all of our Patreon bonus stories, head on over to Patreon. I know you're sitting there right now going, I don't, I have better things to do. Maybe you do. Later on today, do it. Doesn't right. matter. Or, or here's a really easy one. Have your significant other or your friend sign you up for Patreon. Either yeah. you, either they do it for you well, for a, a buck a month. That's a good birthday present. Yeah, it's a really great birthday present. You know, be like, hey, you know what I would really like? Sign me up for for Patreon for Zach and Jesse. Hey, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our Patreon shoutouts. These are awesome folks that support us at five dollars or more every month. Who do we have this week? We have Eric Moeller, Frank Audu, DJ. Joe Doman, Adrian Adronic, Magnus Brunt Moeller, Father Mike Shea, Joe, Gizmo 3D Printers, Lex Van Leeuwen, Johannes Petzold, Dr. Frost DK, Raphael Kunha, and The Solar Economist. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. We can't do it without you. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. Uh, so Honor asks Elon, when can we see Reverse Summon in Beta? And Elon said, we need to finish work on autopilot core foundation code and 3D labeling. Then functionality will happen quickly, not long now. So what's reverse summon? It's a wicked smart pack. A wicked smart pack. Why didn't right. you just say that? <laughs> it's a, uh, there was an ad. I, did we share it on Patreon? Yeah, I think we did. Uh, we shared it on Patreon a while ago. We'll, we'll uh, let... It's actually playing a lot now on TV. I've, really? I've seen it a few times. Yeah. It's the it's the smart pack. It's all those Massachusetts actors uh, <laughs> right. talking with the Boston accent. It's the Kia? Yeah, it's the Kia. The Kia can summon yeah. forward and backward. It's wicked smart. Wow. Something that Tesla's <laughs> been doing for three, four years now? But I do like it better than reverse summon. Like, will you reverse summon the car well, for me? Well, yeah. So, okay, let's talk about this. So, right now, you can summon your car out of a parking space across the parking lot to you. Right. Reverse summon would be the opposite where you pull up in your car, you get out of the car, you go to Zumba or whatever you're going to go do, and then the car goes and parks itself, right. which is harder right. to do because when the car pulls up to you, it can be in any, it can just be like, hi, it showed up, <laughs> um, and you get it and you drive it away. 
But now it has to find a parking space yeah. and park there safely. Yeah. And then Honor asked, will that include improved visualization? New Hardware 3 is great. And Elon said, yes, dramatically improved in my opinion. Everyday Astronaut said, I'm picking up my Model 3 with full self-driving upgrade today. I can't wait. So congratulations to you, Tim. And Elon said, cool. We're tracking to release more full self-driving features later this month. So now that has nothing to do with the latest over-the-air update that just came out, right? That we just talked about on the show. Right. So we're talking more stuff is coming out this it's month? It's going to be full self-driving features. Ho, ho. I'm excited to see what those are. Now, Pauline asked about news for EU regulations, and Elon said, we're making progress. Improved rules are going through the EU Standards Committee, hopefully better in a few months. All right, well, so it's up to the EU Standards Committee then, I guess. So then Christopher talked about uh, GM's EV day, and he said, lots of talk, no new scaled EV products for actual sale. New EV sales begin 2021. Like Elon says all the time, designing is relatively easy compared to manufacturing. Manufacturing is hard. Manufacturing at scale is exponentially harder. And Elon said, also, when tech is new, catalog engineering isn't possible, as there's no catalog has to be first principles. So he means buying off-the-shelf products? Right. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. So you may have noticed at the beginning of this segment that we had uh, these new coasters. I want to thank Eduardo and Dan. Dan made these. These are awesome. Um, these are beautiful... Uh, the 3D printed? 3D printed Tesla coasters. That's nice. Custom, just for thank us. Thank you, dude. And it, the mugs kind of fit perfectly on yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and then you remember when we were at Fully Charged Live in Austin, uh, we got those tattoos. Remember that? Uh, no, we we didn't actually get the tattoos, but Pete had a real bona fide Tesla tattoo. I gotta say, if I ever get drunk enough to get a tattoo, that's probably what I'll get, is a Tesla tattoo, just <laughs> right on my chest. So Shale spotted this in Cambridge, Ontario. This is a Model 3 towing a giant Airstream. What? He said that he talked to the owner and that he averaged about 400 watt hours per mile. Wait a minute, slow down. We would just towed a tiny little four by eight trailer with Sparky, uh, with just a few e bikes in it. Right. And we were getting we we used more energy than that. We used uh, quite a bit more energy than that. I don't know if it's the the Airstream's sleek design or it's well, the Model 3's efficient drive. What kind of range was he getting? Um, so I mean, if you if we do the math for four hundred watt hours on a long range Model Three, that's a range of about one hundred and eighty seven miles total. That's that's We're 100, pulling that. That's a hundred percent to zero percent. So oh, but I mean, still, that's amazing. Yeah. pulling something that big. I'm very impressed. Wow. If that if that number is true, which grain of salt. I'm taking it with <laughs> a grain of salt. Sorry. Congratulations to our buddy Royce. He said that when he was picking up his Model Three from Fremont, he saw three big rig trucks loaded with Model Ys and a parking lot full of them. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's awesome exciting. Congratulations to Dan for his new Model 3, and congratulations to Mike for his new Ionic. Mike is from Nottingham, UK, and uh, he just picked up an Ionic, which is an electric car. And Nick asks us all to consider signing a petition that he's set up asking the Australian government to give incentives to buy EVs. Now get this, Australia is the only G20 country that does not subsidize EVs. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so go sign this petition. All right, it's time for our on-air question. Our question this week is, do you think Tesla will need to consider a not safe to drive or use full self-driving feature specifically for adverse weather conditions? For example, I live in North Dakota and our highways and streets will often go into a travel not advised or closed block condition during the winter, blizzards, ice, etc. My Model 3 does great in handling and getting through the rough weather. I think that Tesla will likely need to have a safety feature enabled to prevent unsafe or misuse of the vehicles as a result. What do you think will happen as a result, for example, to Tesla's robo taxis during events that would prevent safe use of full self-driving so right now if you're using autopilot and you're going through some really 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 bad weather tesla will kick you out of autopilot and tell you that you it won't allow you to go back in until the weather conditions improve that already kind of shows what tesla's stance is going to be i think that when we're talking about full autonomy on tesla vehicles yeah there's gonna there's a question in terms of adverse weather i think what you could do as a uh, autonomous ride hailing service is you can just say, oh, we're shutting down in these particular areas where the government has deemed that it, it is unsafe to travel. I also think that um, when you're driving along as a human and the weather gets so bad that you have to pull over, um, that probably autonomy will be able to go a little bit further than you would have. I mean, I think there's definitely going to be whiteout conditions that probably nothing can drive in mm -hmm. safely. But there are those conditions where you're feeling like as a human, uh, I could drive, but I don't want to. 
maybe the car, because of GPS and other sensors, would be able to do more than a human could do. Um, so it's possible that it could keep driving when you can't. Right. And look, we're running into this problem now anyway. It's going to be a problem until we have fixed the weather. I don't know what you're... Oh, uh, it's called The Boring Company? <laughs> the Boring Company, right. You yeah. put it under underground. Well, this goes back to something that's very human. You bring up a great idea, and then people are so easy to be like, well, what about this? What about this? What about and, that? And, and of and... course, there's always whatabouts. It's not about getting something to perfection. If we ever tried to get something to perfection, we would never would have invented a mug. I mean, right. they're not perfect. Right. And, and yeah, I mean, if we look at... I mean, we were recently driving up the coast, uh, the east coast of the United States. There was a snowstorm, I guess you'd call it, in North Carolina. There's about three inches of snow. In New England, we call that Thursday. Um <laughs> But in North Carolina, it completely shut down the whole state. Yeah. They weren't well equipped to deal with it. There weren't that many plows. They didn't precondition the roads. And so the driving conditions were very unsafe. Also, the drivers completely not used to this sort of weather conditions. Uh, we passed uh, one or two cars that were facing the wrong way in the highway. In in New England, you'd never see that. Right. And then we get to our hotel that we're going to stay in for the night, and we can't get any food. Everywhere is right. basically closed. There will no one will deliver. Yeah, people actually said like we wouldn't risk our drivers' lives in this weather. And right. Like in what weather? Right. So for us, it was no big deal. And you might say if you were starting a a restaurant that would do delivery, you'd say, well, well what would happen in adverse weather conditions? You just don't have it. Let it do that. Right. Um, so I think that that is what Tesla is going to to do. It's either going to have a self determination where it says the weather is bad, I'm going to stop, or I'm going to change the method in which I do it. A little little blind person stick comes out of the front of the car, and I don't know. Or it's just going to say, it is unsafe to drive at this time. We're going to be closing our services at around 9. All right, it's time for the results of our poll. And we said, do you think Tesla's Roadrunner project is real? The number one answer was, what is Tesla's Roadrunner project? Right. <laughs> so we discussed it a little bit earlier in the show. The second answer was, absolutely, it's going to change everything. And that's kind of where I am. And like, I think that it exists. I just, we don't have all the answers. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. And this is sponsored by our friends at Evanex. If you're looking for awesome accessories for your Tesla, check out Evanex and use our discount code to save you even more. This is a review of the Charger, Destination Chargers at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Charlotte. It's in South Charlotte. There are four Tesla Chargers and two more chargers at this location. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is Rene reporting from uh, Mont Saint Sauveur. This is a destination charger. There's eight stalls and there's currently three uh, Model 3s charging. This is at the uh, Ski Hill Mont Saint Sauveur in the Laurentians in Quebec and um, fantastic because it's included in the price of admission so I'm about to go and ski and uh, free to charge and I'll be ready to go back home thank you very much now you know hey Zach and Jesse I am at the Blanding Utah supercharger there are four stalls here behind me and there is the visitor center slash museum for blanding back there behind my car and uh, they have a restroom there and it's actually quite a nice place and then in the area there's not a lot besides that visitor center although across the street there there is a restaurant you could go to so i would say this supercharger location probably gets a six out of ten because of the museum otherwise it would be a bit lower than that now you know I love supercharger reviews. Yes. That's the best part of the show. All right. We have new superchargers in the world. So if you want to say it. the first one. Yes. I can't say it. <laughs> okay. It's the four stall in Toowoomba, Queensland, Australia. Wait, that's, it's Toowoomba? It looks so more complicated than that. Toowoomba. Well, that's awesome. Toowoomba. Toowoomba. I'm sure we're saying it wrong. Number 34 in Australia, the eight stall in Sydney at Marquery Park in New South Wales. The six stall, 250 kilowatt supercharger in Chestertown, New York. And uh, Mark actually inadvertently visited this supercharger before it was even on his map in his car. How did he inadvertently visit it? Uh, he was using a better route planner. Oh, so nice. So better route planner knew the charger was there, sent him through there. 
he was zipping on his way uh, down from Montreal. Wait, so he's like the first person to charge there? He maybe not the first, but maybe the did second he make or us third. a video? Didn't make us a video. Oh, Mark, Mark, come on. All right, the 8-stall 250 kilowatt in Lynchburg, Virginia. The 8-stall urban supercharger in Wisconsin Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. Number 791 in the U.S., number 1818 in the world is the 8-stall 250 kilowatt in New London, Connecticut. All right, it's time for our giveaway for our Patreons. Now, to get into this big bucket of fun, you become a Patreon, and the more you support us, the more chances you have to win. This week, you'll be winning a EcoWare and EcoWare? and EcoWare t-shirt. Yep. Yeah, so these are uh, designed with solar energy, completely carbon offset. You buy a tea, we plant a tree. Who's the winner? The winner is Bruce Thronberg. Congratulations, Bruce. You got yourself an EcoWare t-shirt, and you guys have made it to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching this week. Yeah. See all these people that are going by? These are all Patreon supporters. There's over a 1,000 of them. There's over 1,300 of them. And that's not all of our Patreons, but those are the people who give $5 or more a month. Right. And we can't run this show without them. You may have noticed lots of points in the show where you weren't looking at our faces and you were looking at maybe some text on the screen or some video or some images. That is our editors. Yeah. Okay. That is Brent and Bobby who every Monday, you might think that your Mondays are bad. And, uh, and some of you actually think that your Mondays are awesome because of this show. Their Mondays consist of getting up at the crack of dawn. Yeah. And this week it's even harder because of daylight savings time. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. And they have to come in. They have to go through this entire show, which is usually well over an hour long. You might notice that it currently, in its current state, you might look at the timestamp uh, down below over there. And you might be like, oh, gee, this is a long show. Yeah, it's. It's much longer when the boys get it. They have to cut it up and they have to uh, cut out all the parts where I mess up and I say the wrong thing. Then they got to put jokes in. They have to put jokes. Text. They have to put my face over over some thing to be funny. So that way we can talk about very depressing things right, like, like if, climate like change. Like if Jesse was a dinosaur right now, then boom, he's a dinosaur. Right. Which you guys <laughs> don't have to do because that... We were, you're, you're done with the show. I'm right. So, and right so, now, Brent and Bobby are like, a uh, dinosaur, dinosaur really? dinosaur, really? You don't have to I, do I, it. I they it don't be- have to do it. That is why we need this support, is to is to pay for our editors, is to pay for all of the lights. You may have noticed that we're pretty well lit in this environment right yep. here. You may notice that we have an entire room uh, that is essentially dedicated to us recording this show. Um, and we spent just about all week writing this show. Uh, so tomorrow, I actually have off. Nice. Thank goodness. Uh, that is just so we don't strangle each other. Come back on Tuesday. We start planning for the next week. We yep. start planning in depth. We start planning other uh, stuff like Elon the Disruptor. We have so many different things in the works. You have no idea. Yeah, I know. And the support of these people that you see um, all around us makes it possible. Makes it possible. We got some big things coming. Yeah. If so you, exciting. And hey, if you want to support us and you're like, I can't do Patreon, I just, I can't. Um, I would argue it's only $12 a year to support us for just a buck a month. You right. get the Patreon bonus stories. But if you want to really help us, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, put a comment on the video, something nice, just something nice. I'm so sick of reading awful, mean, yeah, bad comments. And Yeah, the thumbs up means more than you think. That that little like button actually helps share the video a lot. So right. just hit it. It doesn't cost anything. Right. It shares it with people who might be interested in watching this show. And... Thank you for watching. Now you know.